hello everybody and welcome to my channel i'm lorena lorena creole and i have my way woman her of positive fandom with me how are you doing my dear i'm doing great lorena i can't believe it's the holiday season already I know, is, is it crazy it's just like it crept up crept up crept up and just like boom you know now it's uh now it's here and it, it all of a sudden there's like a switch that flips on it's like okay i'm gonna go watch everything i'm gonna consume all the christmas <laughs> all the christmas things and this movie right here is one of my absolute um uh, my absolute favorites mainly because one i'm a big fan of charles dickens in general i've read so many um of his uh, of his novels and a christmas carol is such a classic if you've never read the book read the book trust me it is so so worth reading um it never it never gets old and the fact that you have the muppets with telling a Christmas Carol with their brand of um, of humor and fun, it's. I remember seeing it when I was a kid, and I was just like, "Wow, this is their interpretation of uh, of the novel." So I had to go back in and read it. Have you ever read the novel itself? Oh, wait a minute! You got muted for some reason. It wasn't Sorry me. About that. <laughs> <laughs> It was on one of my reading lists in grammar school. Um, so I did read it, but it's been so long um, since I've read it that um, I am due, I'm due for another reading. <laughs> ah, well, it's, it's great. Get, you know, get yourself like hot cocoa and you have sit in front of the Christmas tree and, you know, and you just, and you just read it. It's, ah, uh, it's such a, such a classic. I love it. All right, folks, so we are going to go ahead and hit the go button on this. Hit the go button on that. Hit. So you should be able to see the countdown that shows you exactly where we are. Uh, in the film, give or take a couple of milliseconds. Hey, Dark Ring Duck, good to see you. And yeah, this movie did come out after Jim Henson unfortunately passed away. I think... I think that's why it's even bigger of a deal than it was because I think this was the first production that came out after uh, after his shocking death. So, makes it even more uh, makes it even more special. <laughs> And I love that they have Gonzo as Charles Dickens. <laughs> Fozzie Bear, instead of Fezzy Wig, he is a uh, Fozzie Wig. And of course, who can forget the amazing Michael Caine as Scrooge? I think the only Scrooge that I've seen that can come close to touching his version of Scrooge would be Patrick Stewart. Wow. Yeah. The one thing about a Muppets movie, the, the like the soundtrack is always, <laughs> always fun and always great music. 
Like, I love the fact that Muppets from Outer Space has so many Earth, Wind, and Fire tracks in it. <laughs> Aww. Because they're pigs. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay that this must I, have been so much fun to me absolutely imagine working around all these muppets i had to laugh at the lady said look out and she had like a barrel of bananas because in victorian times people would say that they threw the contents of the chamber pot out and straight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Dickens always had those those powerful openings with very little lines like a tale of two cities <laughs> it was the best of times it was the worst of times mm hmm <laughs> For a castle? On my way to Disneyland, I wanted to say hi. Well, glad you said hi, my dear. I think your stream starts at 6, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, actually. Nah. <laughs> Eve is for us, Mises. <laughs> Thank you. 
who died. <laughs> I see, Jay. <laughs> oh, you know how to watch parties go. <laughs> Just saying hi, got to run, have fun, and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you, Darkwing yeah. Duck. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs> oh, my God. oh good I like using a rat to clean the window <laughs> Just hanging out in the chat since my Disney Plus won't play with the stream. Really? Oh, no. Not even through... Uh... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, if you're a channel member, you get the uh, synchronous group watch. Since Oh, so you're saying it won't play concurrently? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> uh, we'll keep you updated. The action. CJ says, y'all look so pretty just to watch the Muppets. They should feel honored. I feel like I'm boarding a plane in the 1950s. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so sweet, CJ. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, on mobile now. Okay. Yes. Thank you. A horrible thing to say. He seems too happy to to say that, but it just shows just how depraved Scrooge is. Because this is supposed to be the most charitable time of year, and he is anything but charitable. <laughs> Man. <sighs> Always made you wonder what happened that these two are related. Only Henson would put speaking vegetables in a film <laughs> and have a scene where they try to warn the owner to be stolen. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Dang, that's gangster. No, let go, can't get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> He's using a rat to stoke the fire. <laughs> it's an innovative, an innovative period, and yes. So, like, uh, it's a wonderful life and or slash miracle on 34th street lrc watch party this year probably it's a wonderful life i think 
Yeah. yeah. I always love this part in the book that just shows like the spirit of the season and screws just like, no, I don't care. I'm not giving you money. Yeah. He's totally not into anything celebration related at all. Actually. He's so, so dour. Which is the perfect setup. Cause we're just like, what? What happened to make him this way? They're like, uh, uh, you're gonna give us customary? <laughs> now this is Dickens. so cruel it sounds like Canada's you know health service situation mm -hmm. now yeah being the rabbit so sweet. Dang. <laughs> that was cruel. Very. <laughs> CJ says Scrooge and I are kindred souls. Bah humbug. What? I don't believe that. Mm hmm like, ask him. Mm-mm. The whole day. rat turn back like yeah, yeah back him up true trying to <laughs> dang He made the logical argument, there will be no one for you to do business with. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Your Muslim uncle says, it's a wonderful life. He used to cut me every year because my father kidnapped my brother when I was nine years old. <gasps> oh, my oh my gosh. Goodness. Especially when his bro comes back. Wow. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Oh, my goodness. I can't even imagine that. Oh, wow. I was reunited with them 15 years later, the first Christmas after the movie didn't affect me anymore. Okay. Once that happened, I'm glad you guys are whew, glad you guys are reunited. Yeah, that's tough. 43 Christmas titles. Not bad. These rats are something else. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 
wait, wait, wait. So they're using the stove as a sauna. Aww. That's as funny as in the Muppets Take Manhattan where the rats are skating on pats of butter on the, <laughs> the griddle. <laughs> I was like, what? Do oh, I was like, what just went by? <laughs> <laughs> that was like the rare occasion when you'd see the their feet Muppet's feet Hanson was just a master of putting these like heartfelt musical numbers. They weren't there just to be there. Mm -hmm. It just oh. like would emotionally pull you into the story. Oh, poor Bean. He's sleeping in um newspaper. <laughs> the these sets are beautiful. Aren't they? It's it's just like it looks like you stepped right into Victorian England. And that was the wisdom of Dickens. When I first read this, I didn't even pay attention to it. I'm like, yeah, 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 okay, whatever. And then when it went back and read, I'm like, oh, okay. The door knocker. Yeah, this is free. That's scary. I think I'll... I think I also liked it because it was also part horror in a little, in a way. <laughs> hey, Jerry Mendoza. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. And thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. No worries. You can always roll back. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't be if the door knocker did something like that? Yeah, that's very unusual. That's like haunted. That's like haunted. Uh, haunted house one hundred and one. What?
We are watching this on Disney Plus right now. So some people are watching it on Disney Plus. Some people have it on digital download and also on DVD copies. So when you play this back, if you have a DVD copy or you're watching it on Disney Plus later on, you can just follow this timer right up here. It tells you where we are. There's a door knocker and labyrinth. <laughs> I hate horror movies, and yet the scariest Carol movies are the best. <laughs> I'm a copy, y'all. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I had to laugh at that. It took me a little bit. This is very creepy. Right in his bedroom. Mm hmm There were like all of these supernatural happenings. And when you're reading it, you know it's building to something. When someone as hard and as stoic as Scrooge is getting thrown off his game by all this, all these inexplicable things happening, and there's no logical reasoning for it. Mm -hmm. Now, folks that have a cold house in Victorian England around, they, this was crazy. Most people wanted their house to be warm, not cold on purpose, because. They're too cheap to pay for heat. It's a big house. Yes. Now that's the front door, mm -hmm. right? It's like, who would be ringing? People do late calls back then, right? Yeah, they really didn't. The only person who would call that late as if it was an emergency or back when doctors would make house calls. This was absolutely classic casting to have these two guys. <laughs> Christmas has plenty of ghost stories. Carol being the most famous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Kermit the Frog is Bob Cratchit. And that was his rationing. It must have been something I ate. You know, there's a logical explanation for this. No, there's no logical explanation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 12 of you in here watching. Thank you so very much. Here's where we are on the timer. I'm here with the... Uh, Positive fandom, we are watching Muppet Christmas Carol. We simply threw you out. <laughs> Dang. Oh my gosh, that's awful. That's terrible. Good one, Dylan C. Yeah, your money.
Those are money boxes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because Jacob Marley, yeah, he said, my greed is what produced these chains. Yeah. And if you don't change your ways, you'll wind up like me. Three three spirits. spirits. The bargaining. <laughs> Ooh. There isn't a musical number in this that I don't like. They're so good. It's like you can tell. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, my dear. No, the lighting and the effects as well are so well done. That looked terrifying. Yeah. And you can tell that um, you can tell that Jim Henson read a Christmas Carol like backwards and forwards because that scene where Scrooge finally meets Jacob Marley is absolutely terrifying. Dude is scared out of his mind when he first sees him, and he's still scared now. I mean, he's playing a good a good you know he's being a sport about it but he's terrified mm -hmm. right now yeah he's absolutely terrified so that whole number like literally they just went right into how scrooge felt and like what marley was trying to explain to him Aww. rizzo is nuts <laughs> He's still obsessing over those jelly veins. I don't blame him. Holidays. Especially if they're the really, really good ones. Tasty ones. Mm -hmm. Not the birdie bots every flavor beans, though. No. No. <laughs> Look at the light. It's so well done. And he looks very nice and enclosed and warm mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> that is a nice clock. There we go. <laughs> and this is the ghost of Christmas past. Now, if you saw the movie Scrooge, the ghost of Christmas uh, past, wasn't that the cab driver? Mm -hmm. The taxi cab driver. <laughs> 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 oh, I love that. <laughs> Aw, little hand. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> I 
love how they do comedy. And the special effect on this is gorgeous. She's just floating in the air. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see through her. She's translucent a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because in the book, from what I remember, they kind of like did um, like fly over. Yes. Like they were going back in time. <laughs> hey snort a poop is cute verse says hello who minds and other critters but good to see you my dear What? I love how his demeanor just like changes. He's just like in wonderment. <laughs> Dante Moliere. Shakespeare classics. <laughs> mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and he was boarding at this school, yes. so he was there every day. It was like Harry Potter, more or less. Exactly. <laughs> oh, everybody cares about Christmas. Yeah. Mm, no. <laughs> CJ you need to watch Scrooge. You it's would fantastic. absolutely love it. Instead of a um, money lender, like in this movie, Bill Murray is a TV network executive <laughs> in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Sam the Eagle.
And that was a big deal because who you did an apprenticeship with would set you up um, for the pretty much for the rest of your professional life. Absolutely. You really needed these apprenticeships in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to leave. <laughs> Remember, don't tip the driver. Dang. <laughs> This must be fizzy wigs. Mm -hmm. And this one, they call them fuzzy wig instead of fizzy wig. Mm hmm. <laughs> This was like the party. If you read the book, it's your classic Victorian Christmas party with all the trimmings, all of the outfits, all the food, all the music. Just an amazingly great time. I love animal. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how instead of Fezzy Wig and Sons, it's Fozzy Wig and Mom. <laughs> Now it's a party. <laughs> I like your mind, Ebenezer. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, I have to talk to this. Mm hmm.
Hell yeah, he remembers this. It's like, no, 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 don't show that Christmas mm -mm. Eve. <laughs> don't don't show that one. Don't show what happened then. And we're just like, it's totally gonna show what happened then. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you did, Zen. I love that song. I wanted to play the version that had this song in it, but Disney Plus decided to make it an extra so I couldn't do a group watch with it. Oh. Yeah. But I remember that because I actually, I think it was a DVD or no, or I think I um, paid for an old VHS copy to get that because that whole song is is heartbreaking because he sings about you know in the present how he misses her and she sings as if she's in the past talking about just how she feels that he doesn't love her anymore it is oh it's so heartbreaking and I'm mad they cut it out of the the DVD version. Yeah, it makes it it's a, it's like a different scene entirely. Yeah, because you see how her heart broke, and he just didn't really pay attention to it because he's so consumed with his career. And then you see him in the present where he is just like, I don't want to, I don't want to be pained by this memory. Mm mm mm. And that was the last memory he was left with. They said it'll be on all the copies going forward. Now they found the negatives. Okay, great. I will buy the physical copy with that in it. And you see him watch his Yes, his past self leave, and you can see Scrooge wanting to go after him and make him stay. Yes, that's why it was so. Uh, it's completely different now. Yeah. I wonder what the justification was for them taking that out. It just. It, the song must have been copyrighted. It could have been, yeah. AKA Father Christmas. Because if you read the book, like I had an illustrated version and you had a, like it was Father Christmas on top of just all food and gifts and presents and Lance says Steve McIntosh, who plays Fred, was in the same West End production of Bugsy Malone as me in 1982. Tallulah was played by Catherine Zeta Jones. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really cool. Thank you for letting us know that. Zen Water says Katzenberger took it out of a. Uh, took it out for the theatrical cut because it was too adult emotion for kids. Jim was not happy. I would have been pissed really? too. Because you needed to see that. That was a consequence to the action that he that he took. And Scrooge regretted that and that song actually put that out there. Kids should definitely see you. Is it Jeff? Yeah, they could totally yeah. handle that. Yeah. Was that Jeffrey Katzenberg? I think it was Jeffrey Katzenberg. Patrick Stewart's version of A Christmas Carol is good too. Yeah. Yeah, I love Patrick Stewart's version too. Mm hmm.
John Ratzenberger. Oh, John Ratzenberger. Oh. Hmm. Yes, Jerry Minosa, it is available on a DVD, although I personally, well, depends on how fast you want it, would wait for the ones where they include that missing, uh, that missing number. But yes, it is available on DVD. You could roll into Walmart and Target and pick it up. I've never seen that. I did not know George C. Scott did uh, Christmas Carol. I'll have to check that out. I think that's the only large size Muppet that I've that I've that I've seen. Yeah, he looks like human size. Yeah. Kind of like what they do with Sweetums. <laughs> it's like the only one that's like human size. And I guess maybe he is even bigger, but mm -hmm. he looks really good. very very trained being in that costume and acting through it again beautiful set design it's and so cinematography amazing. <laughs> yeah this is how you do it it's it's absolutely fabulous Oh, damn. <laughs> That's old. That's cold. But I thought he wanted his uncle. Mm-hmm. His reputation precedes him. Yeah, he's like, screw this. I don't want to see any more celebrations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knowing how they feel about me. I think they missed that part in the book where Fred actually said, you know, he may be miserly and all of that, but he's still, he's still my uncle and I do love him. Exactly, Zen. Exactly. I think it hurt him to actually see the reality of this is how people think about him.
<laughs> and they had this little, this little Christmas deuce. It's <laughs> tiny. <laughs> Whatever your name is. Tiny Tim. On record, I'm still mad that current Disney split up Kermit and Miss Piggy. I w I'm I'm still pissed about that. <laughs> yeah, it's not cool. Nah. Because a goose was something that like poor people would get when they couldn't afford like a chicken or something bigger. That's what made me cry. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. I never knew George C. Scott did one, so check that out. That is so important right mm -hmm. now. Absolutely.
I love this song. <laughs> Ah. That's correct. Yeah. Because in the book, when Scrooge saw this, he saw how people could be so happy with the little that they had and grateful for, for what they had. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tiny Tim was, uh, he's just like, his kid's sick. In the ghost of Christmas present, he would age throughout the whole thing. So by the time it was over, he was like an old man with gray. I believe because he was genuinely afraid of what the future was going to be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Practical effects, no CGI whatsoever. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why this is this is so beloved this 30 years this movie is 30 years old and it still looks really good yeah and that ghost of Christmas future Dickens was a master at how he did this. This looks so scary. Almost thinks it's one of the Skeksis. <laughs> yeah, it, it does look like it. Ooh. The thing is that I always wondered if the if the ghost looks scary, if the future is scary, or does the ghost look friendly if the future is okay, you know? That's interesting insight. <laughs> Except we'll meet you at the finale. We're too scared. Bye, y'all. <laughs> well, okay. Zen Water says he'd seen himself for what he was. He now knew the future wouldn't be kind. Exactly. Yeah, Zen is speaking to your point. <laughs> Would the ghost of Christmas future look different if your future was a positive one? Hmm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So I remember in the book, the chambermaids talking about how much they would get mm -hmm. for the curtains mm -hmm. and everything and his dressing it's gowns and hardly any holes in any of this is a good gown, mm -hmm. such a, a good price. <laughs> I don't care if it's been off his body. He was dead. He doesn't need it now. They were like <laughs> vultures. <laughs> Mm hmm. Mm hmm. He was a cheap ass. <laughs> No, I've never seen that. You know what? No, I take that back. I probably have seen it, but don't remember it because it's it was such a long time ago. Mm -hmm. The song for people who took his stuff was he writes. Uh, I was just a not not I wasn't shocked, but just the way that Dickens wrote just how dispassionate people were and almost like glad that he was that he was dead it was a shouting for it situation wasn't it absolutely right completely and then we found out tiny tim was dead <laughs> and then you see his empty place where Tiny Tim used to sit. Uh, this looks like a statue in that scene. Mm hmm. Yeah, because you just see his hat and his scarf and his um and his crutch. And in the graveyard. And the thing is, it's like we knew. 
we knew what we were going to be shown. It's like it's floating right next to yeah. it. And he knows it's him. <laughs> and all he did was point. And he kept pointing to the gravestone. Love the costume. That must have been so terrifying to see. Mm hmm. How different he was in this part than when the story began. Character growth. <laughs> because he was distraught when he found this out. But the spirit said nothing. Because this is like, what was there to say? <laughs> Like, what day is this? <laughs> hey. It's like, uh, yeah, you threw a wreath at me. <laughs> Literally. And people were like, who is this guy?
Hmm. Yeah, she is creepy. Yes, because in the book, he did run into these gentlemen again. And they were just like, uh, all of this money. Well, God bless you. <laughs> He was basically a money changer. Think like investment banker. Yeah. We love pugs. I see so many cool comments. We're actually going to get to those when the movie wraps up because we really want to talk about those a little bit more. Definitely. <laughs> I can't a bucket to go. <laughs> They don't know how to react. I love it. They're like, he's hugging me. What's happening? Yeah, like, who is... Who is this? Uncle Scrooge? Because Fred was like, what? What happened to him? <laughs> Are you punking yeah, me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shake it. All right, y'all stick with the program. <laughs> we only got one shot at this. Yeah, don't mess it up. <laughs> What? <laughs> mm -hmm. What was that? Uh. <laughs> come in, come in. <laughs> uh. 
They're like, this is the Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> now this is actually the flip side of the song the love we lost So you wouldn't even really know truly the gravity of this ending refrain if you hadn't seen right. the original pale. song. That's exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. Absolutely, your Muslim uncle. He he does. <sighs> So that is the end, folks. We're going to let the end credits run. So glad you guys are all here with us. Oh, my gosh. So there's a couple of comments I wanted to uh, go over really, really, really quick. Let's see. And Zen Waters, this was actually a very, very, very good point because some people were like, well, how come you had to have, you know, the ghost of the future and wasn't enough just to have those two ghosts and wasn't it, you know, enough that Scrooge was like, okay, I've seen enough. He said, but necessary. You can't just halfway learn your lesson. They had to finish it. He had to face the fear and terror of what would come so that he would really change and not just fake it for a bit. What do you think about that? Um, I think it's true because um, it wasn't an, just enough for him to see Marley um, and his partner, um, it, you know, in that manner, because it, he, it didn't necessarily relate to Scrooge that that's how he would end up, you know, in his mind, he, he might not even understand the impact of what he has been doing or neglecting to do. So mm -hmm. he needed to see those examples of how he has actually changed. He didn't grow up like that. He wasn't raised like that. Mm -mm. So, so there is that, um, you know, what exactly happened to him that changed him and why did it even happen to the other guys um, that he worked with? You know, this is something to think about something snapped in them or there was some kind of behavioral change where it wasn't important to them anymore um kind of like these simple joys of life or even seeing you know his nephew who is his only mm -hmm. relative it's kind of sad um that they were kind of estranged but um you know there was a little bit of, of a story behind that with his sister who died and mm -hmm. you know there was that whole part as well but um yeah he needed to see his name on that stone uh so he would be aware because nobody lives forever you're only guaranteed you're only given a certain amount of time and you're not guaranteed uh, a long life necessarily, especially at that time, um, <laughs> at that time of the world. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're lucky to to live and, and maybe even have kids or, or so be it. But right. he, he's older. He's older. So there might be fewer years ahead than behind. Mm -hmm. So he, if he has to make any change, he's got to do it very quickly right exactly exactly and this is like the whole thing with character growth he had to truly learn that lesson and that's like the payoff that we see and that's why when you see his transformation at the end you know that it is truly truly genuine so 
uh, masterful writing by Dickens and masterful acting by uh, by Michael Caine. And this is just this is just great. I I love this because it introduces especially young kids to literature in a way because it's it's a great book um, to to read. And there's so many things behind the scenes. I mean, yes, it's like the Muppets to kind of suck the kids in, but to actually read the actual uh, actual story, it's 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 so good. They did such a flipping great job uh, with this. Your Muslim uncle says, well, I was just posting to my wife, Ethel, this is a good allegory for the battle between the ego and the soul. Only through humility can the ego see what the divine spark of the soul is trying to guide us. Very yes. beautifully put. Absolutely. Um, and I was unaware of that allegory. Uh, so it's nice to see these things. The suggestion uh, for mm -hmm. that is fantastic. You're right, Lorena. These, these chat comments are really incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm biased. The chat is on fire as uh, as always. We love doing these watch parties with you guys. Mm -hmm. You guys are absolutely amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, that is going to end the watch party for the Muppet Christmas Carol. Um, again, one of my all-time favorite Christmas movies to watch never fails to get me into the Christmas spirit. And how amazing that after 30 years, this movie is, is still a joy to, uh, a joy to watch and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. It was this quality of work and the amount, you know, it probably took them a year or two just to create all the puppets and, and the, um, the costumes to, to get those together. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, somebody has to coordinate all this. So even just, you know, a, a 30 minute or sorry, 30 second part is very, very complicated getting everybody in in one shot. So it looks mm -hmm. like a certain way from that point of view. So, um, you know, these types of executions, all practical effects, as somebody had said, it's not a small undertaking. Exactly. Not not at all. But the end product uh, love it. That's why this is so, um, so beloved. And uh, even at Disneyland, I think, I don't know if they did it this year, but I know last year they literally had like this, like, uh, I think like one of the trolley cars and they had the Muppets dressed up from like the Muppets Christmas Carol. Aww. And uh, I wish we could have had it, but we didn't. Uh, no worries. We got this movie. It's amazing. Thank you all so very much for for hanging out with us with this watch party. Yeah. Those of you watching this on the replay, thank you so, so very much for checking it out. So before we go, do you want to tell the people where they can find you and what you have coming up? Well, Lorraine, you and I have Ladies of the PGS tomorrow night on the Burr Network at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so do please check us out there. Um, and if guys, you can always find me on my channel, Positive Fandom, uh, where I do all the parlay of the fandom at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday brunch on Sundays. Uh, so do please check that out as well. But you can also find me on the 1-6 scale man network for either Say What or Uncivilized Scoundrels. And you can find me streaming with Lorena on our channel, um, on our show, Toxic Male Appreciation on her Twitch channel, um, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and watch parties like this. And you can always find me on the Burr Network with Robert Meyer Burnett on our show, Midnight Musings on the weekends. So please do check it out and please like and subscribe to my channel. Please like and subscribe yes. to Lorena's channel as well, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, as for myself of course thank you all so 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 very much for uh for being here of course uh tonight in about what like two two and a half hours at 8 p.m eastern the last welcome to florida show of 2022 we are going to be having our third florida man bingo show mainly because there's a ton of articles we just don't get to use every week. They go in the pile. And guess what? We just have 
a fun bingo game going through these articles and having a great time. And of course, we're going to have giveaways too. So you definitely, definitely do not, uh, do not want to, do not want to miss that. Toxic male appreciation is on hiatus. However, be on the lookout for a video upload because her and I are going through 13 manly Christmas movies yes. and you do not want to miss that mm -hmm. video upload. School lunch table is also on hiatus until the second week in January. So make sure your notifications are on because between impromptu watch parties and uploaded videos and all that to keep you guys company through the holidays, you definitely don't want to miss that. So make sure you subscribe to me make sure you're subscribed to her of positive fandom and we will see you next time bye, bye.